And it's tied at 1-1, folks. Let's talk about the Rangers putting the Panthers to sleep last night in overtime with Johnny Lazarus, Rangers beat reporter and the co-host of the Daily Face Off. My man, Goudreau put the city on fire last night. Johnny, what's going on, man? Well, Brandon, I don't know if I can get as fired up as you are, but uh, I always appreciate when you have me on after a win as opposed to a loss. The vibes are very high right now, and, you know, it's it's the beauty of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Sometimes there are some unsung heroes, and last night, yep. Barclay Goodrow, just another part of the magical season for the New York Rangers. So he's got four goals in 12 playoff games, had four and 80 in the regular season. I mean, you can't ask for a, a better guy to step up and score a big goal like that. And he wasn't even the guy everyone was talking about heading into game two. Uh, obviously, with all the storylines from Rempe to being uh, out physical going into game two, was that a statement game or a statement win before hopping on the road to go down to Florida? I, I don't know if you can call it a statement game or statement win, but it's certainly a response. You know, mm. I think the biggest mm. thing for the Rangers going from game one to game two was where was the backbone? You know, Philip Hedl takes a big hit at the end of the game from Nico Mikula, and nobody answers the bell for that. You know, you want to stir it up. You want to show that you have a little bit of a fight in you, and no one necessarily did it in game one, and that's the beauty of having a weapon like Matt Rempe in your back pocket is that you insert him, and all of a sudden the team swagger is just a little bit different. So Rempe brings this thing that is somewhat immeasurable, and at this point I think it's undeniable, and the Rangers came out in the first minute, first 10 minutes of game two, and they threw everything they had of the Florida Panthers sure the Panthers responded in the second half of that first period but the Rangers took the punch and came right back so with Matt Rempe it's it's this thing that to me now it's it's something that I think everyone whether you love him whether you hate him I think you have to accept that he has an impact and a positive one on that on this team I mean he played a little bit over 10 minutes last night probably played his best game of the playoffs and you saw just a little bit more of bite in the Rangers last night. But the weird thing about hockey, and I want to make this point, and sorry for rambling on, Brandon, in game one, it felt like the Rangers had better high-quality chances. They had two breakaways, a couple two-on-ones, some ab odd man rushes. You didn't see that much in game two, but what they lacked in game one was getting pucks behind the Panthers defensemen and then hitting them and playing physical, which they had a ton of in game two. So hockey's a weird sport where sometimes the good chances, they don't win you the game, but you know, that sustained pressure and playing physical and doing the little gritty things can really help you in the long run. So we know about matching the Panthers physicality. We know about implementing or putting Matt Rimpey into the lineup for his energy. But talk ho hockey to me, man. Uh, what were some <laughs> of the major adjustments uh, Peter Laviolette made from game one to game two? Well, I think the biggest thing was staying connected in all three zones. The Rangers on their breakouts in game one, they turned the puck over a lot. And granted, they gave the puck away a little bit last night, too. It wasn't perfect. Mm -hmm. But I thought Jacob Schrube and Keandre Miller had a much better game breaking the puck out. Uh, Adam Vox struggled a little bit when it came to that department. But the Rangers, again, they were connected in their game plan. They got pucks behind the Panthers defenseman, which is what Florida is so good at doing to New York. They get the puck in, they hound it, they get it back, they create offense. The Rangers did that last night. They got a little more contribution from the fourth line. They got a little help from the third line. And then the top guys, you know, Vincent Trocek, Adam Fox, Artemi Panera, and Alexi Lafreniere, they come through with a big first goal in that game. Carter Verhage gets the puck in his feet. Alexi Lafreniere, who doesn't always throw the body, but, you know, will do it occasionally. There's a huge hit, knocks Verhage on his butt. Fox finds the puck, hits Trocek back door for a wide open pass. And that was also a big mistake by Aaron Ekblad. He, you know, went outside the dots, tried to throw a big hit, caught himself out of position, and the Rangers counterattack. Yeah. So what Peter Laviolette did was just, you know, I think send a message to this team of playing a different certain style. Like the Rangers typically like to skate the puck in over the blue line, possess it, and make a play. Last night, they were more inclined to dump it and get it back. And, and that's not an easy thing to do with a skilled team like the Rangers to convince them that that's going to work, but, but they were. Lavi sent a message to the team. The team sent a message to the fan base. 35 home wins this season. That's second most in franchise history. You were at the game last night. What was the energy like after that OT game winner? I mean, it was loud. Uh, you know, there were times where it felt like the building was shaking. I mean, after the first goal, the energy was incredible, too. But throughout the game, I thought it was way better than game one. And and that's the thing about New York. I think, you know, a lot of people have talked about it. Some people boo here and there, but there's a lot of pressure to play in this city. And, you know, fans pay a lot of money to go to the games, and they expect a certain standard. In game one, they felt they didn't 
find that standard. So in game two, it's up to the team and up to the guys to get the crowd in it, right? Like there are moments in sports where the crowd has to get the team going. But I think a lot of it is the team has to get the crowd going. I think that's something that all athletes say because, you know, um, it, it's just a passionate bunch in New York. And Madison Square Garden is a great place to play. You know, you hear road guys talk about it all the time. It's the best building in the world to play in, especially in moments like this. And last night, the Rangers really did a good job of firing up the crowd and, and backing it up with their effort and their execution. So um, the building was rocking last night. Igor Shosturkin was phenomenal in goal. A great performance from Shosturkin. But overall, the Rangers just did all the little things that they didn't really have in game one to, to bring the energy last night. Throughout the course of the playoffs, different guys have had what I like to call guard moments or Madison moments, mm -hmm. you know. Why is this dude, Vincent Trocek, always coming up big in some of the biggest games? Well, Vincent Trocek is a guy who touches every aspect of the Rangers team. Um, you know, he, he takes face-offs, he plays power play, excellent at five-on-five, five, kills penalties, um, the six-on-five, five-on-six. Like, this guy does it all. And, you know, I think you hear him talk now and... You know, he, he was open last night on, on uh, ESPN with Scott Van Pelt after the game and said when he was a younger guy, like every playoff game, he was nervous. And, you know, it's something that you mature and grow into and understand that, you know, while all these things are bigger than just a game, you have to look at it as it is just another game. And that's what will make you successful. So Vinny Trocek has been around for quite some time now. He's been on good teams. He's been on this Panther team. He was on the Carolina Hurricanes team, who the Rangers took down in the last round. And now, you know, I think he's kind of just playing a little more stress-free than than maybe he has in years past. Um, and I think he understands how big the moment is, but also has that experience that he's using to his own advantage. And, um, you know, there's no moment that's too big for Vinny Trocek. And his overall compete level and battle level is kind of what's setting him um, ahead of everyone else. Like, the guy is just the the most fierce competitor you can ask for. The other day at Stefan Mateau's Foundations event, uh, I was talking with guys like Adam Graves, Mike Richter, and, uh, and Steph, and they were just talking about the leadership within the locker room back in 1994. Barclay Goudreau said uh, that Jonathan Quick was vocal in the locker room before overtime. Did any of the players tell you what that speech was like and how, gr how great Truly is that leadership in the locker room, Johnny? So full transparency, I didn't talk to any players about what Quick may have said, but I, I did talk to Quick last week, actually one-on-one -on -one before game six of the Hurricane Series. And, and something that's remarkable too, Dan Rosen brought it up in, his press, in the press conference yesterday with Laviolette before game two. Jonathan Quick has said, if all goes right, I won't play at all. And, and in what world is that an athlete's mentality, right? To put yeah. the team, you know, uh, you talk about it all the time. Players put the team ahead of themselves, but to hear an actual player say, if everything is good, I won't even see the ice. It's it's just incredible to see how well he understands, you know, what this situation is for the New York Rangers. And Jonathan Quick is a guy who last year was in a similar spot with the Vegas Golden Knights. Remember, he gets traded and he doesn't see any ice time in the playoffs, but his voice carries through a locker room when you have a guy who's won three Stanley Cups. You know, two of them he was the starting goaltender for in L.A., it's it's all about saying the right things in the big moments. And again, like I don't know what he said, but you know, I know prior to game six of the last round, Jonathan Quick told me it doesn't matter. He actually even dropped an F bomb. It doesn't effing matter uh what happened in, in the previous two games. Whether we were down three oh and won two games or we were up three oh and lost two games, every situation, every day, every game is its own unique situation. And one play, one thing can impact a series in, in the biggest possible way. So uh, I'm sure you know, Jonathan Quick just said one play at a time, one shift at a time. Like, you know, those little cliches that you hear, but they're yeah. so real and like that. So having his voice and having his experience in the room uh, is huge. And, you know, another two-time Stanley Cup winner in Barclay Goodrow is the one who scores the goal. Like I tell people, I've been in a, a Super Bowl winning locker room before. That we, not me mentality goes a long way, especially in the playoffs. Uh, you're, you're all packed, ready to go down to Florida for games three and four. Just just quick overview. Uh, give us what you're thinking heading down to uh, Sunrise. Well, listen, I think uh, everything was worth the price of admission last night. You know, the hatred is a little bit there now in this series where we didn't see much of it in game one. You know, I expect Florida to come out a little bit heavier in game three because they're going to want to get their home fans obviously involved in the game. But knowing that there will be a lot of Ranger fans in that building, I'm, I'm very curious to see how this plays out because the energy is going to feel like, 
you know, potentially a game at Nassau Coliseum in in the old days where it was kind of like a 50-50 split between fan bases. I mean, there are a lot of New York transplants down in Florida. So to me, this is not necessarily the road environment that we saw the Rangers play in Carolina. Um, and I think they have to use that to their advantage. But Paul Maurice is also a very smart coach for the Florida Panthers and understands they had the last change. They had the matchups that they want. We saw Alexander Barkov have a pretty dominant game last night um, against Savannah Jed. So maybe Maurice has something up his sleeve to get Barkov out there against a different line. You never know. But I expect the rest of this series to be more like last night's game. Yeah. You know, a lot of post whistle scrums, a little more hatred, uh, a little more emotion, and just some great on ice product. Uh, it was great. And the goaltenders were outstanding too. So um, game one was a little fluky, but I think the rest of the series will be more like what we saw last night. Yeah, I think we can all agree. We're seeing playoff hockey at its finest. Uh, safe travels down there, my man. We'll definitely check in with you uh, throughout the season, uh, the series. Thank, thank you, Brandon. Hopefully I have a nice tan going next time I come on here. <laughs> Don't come back darker than me, though. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you. Have a good one.